morning, everybody. Pastor Nate Foreman here, uh, one of the pastors at my Lebanon Lutheran Church, uh, here for a walk into God's Word, uh, uh, an encouragement for you from God's Word, um, an encouragement to you about God's Word, and and also an, an encouragement and maybe an instruction for you, for your life today, and for your faith uh, that would lead you, bring you, uh, by gripping to Christ uh, into eternity. Uh, so uh, we're walking our way through Genesis chapter 27, chapter 28. We're walking our way through Genesis one chapter at a time. Um, each video covers two or three chapters a, a shot. Um, and you can subscribe uh, to these videos if you're watching this on YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button. That way every time a video is posted, you, you get a notification. Um, you can also subscribe to a daily email um, that comes out with a, with a little bit more commentary and a little bit more thought. Um, a little bit more guidance for you for, for some for some personal devotions. My my deepest prayer. I keep saying this, but I'm gonna I'm a broken record on this, and and I'm okay with that. Um, my deepest prayer is that you would become students of the Scripture, not just for the brain for the sake of your brain, uh, but for the sake of your soul and for the sake of your heart and the sake of your life. Uh, God's word is not intended to be um, something that we do in the classroom. Uh, it's not something, it is something that we do in the classroom, but that's not all it is. It's something that goes beyond the classroom and, and it affects us. Uh, it affects us um, from the inside out. Um, it has a positive effect on us. That it, it affects our emotions, it affects our thinking, it affects our living, it affects everything about us. And we're walking into Genesis 27 and 28 today. And, and I would say that, you know, as I've meditated on these sections of scripture again and again, uh, one of the things that hits me hard, um, especially in this short little section, 27 and 28, is the cost of sin and the constancy of God. I want to talk to you about both of those things. The cost of sin and the constancy of God. Uh, you, you, we're getting to know Jacob right now um, in Genesis chapter 27. We began to get to know Jacob, uh, the brother of Esau, the son of Isaac. Uh, we got to know him beginning in chapter 25. And, and already there, Moses, when he writes down the story of Jacob, um, who becomes who, who becomes a really big uh, historical figure and, and, a, and a father of the faith, uh, Jacob, he he's later is called Israel, which he becomes the father of the Israelites, right? So, so this is a big time guy, but I want you to learn something about Jacob already here, that Jacob, uh, who later becomes Israel, is, is a little bit of a, my wife would say, he's a little bit of a hot mess. And Moses lets us know that about Jacob right out of the gate because it, Moses, when in chapter 25, when he records for us and tells us about, about how Jacob was born, that he was grabbing his heels, his brother's heel. He's, he gets the name Jacob, which means heel grabber, which is an idiom uh, for deceiver. So right off the bat, you get to know about Jacob that, and, and Moses wants us to know this, right away off the bat, you get to know that Jacob is a little bit sneaky, a little bit sly, a little bit deceptive, um, and he's going to be the father of the nation? Okay, hang on. Um, then then right away, in that very first encounter between Jacob and Esau, what does Jacob do? He, he Esau would later accuse him of tricking him out of his birthright. Um, he's, he's, he's sneaky, he's slimy, he's he, he's the car salesman, sorry to be stereotypical, but he's the guy with the slick back hair and the leather jacket who's trying to schmooze and, 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 and weasel his way in um, to get what he wants, right? There's a, and there's a cost to that. You, you see that in, in chapter 27, you see this long, drawn-out, like, deception of, of Isaac. Isaac can't see. Isaac can't, he, he can smell, he can touch, but he can't see. His senses are weak. And, and, and he's about to die, so he's on his deathbed. And then what happens between, with, between Jacob and Isaac, dad and son, and, and Rebecca, the, the mom, gets involved in this too. They, they, they conspire, they, and really that's what it is. They conspire to come up with this, this elaborate ruse to trick Isaac into J giving Jacob the blessing, right? So, so there is this like elaborate sin, this elaborate... Ruse, he's he's slicky, he's slimy, he's 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 a weasel in the grass, right? And there's a cost, right? There's a cost. Think about the internal turmoil that Jacob must have felt. Just imagine the cost to Jacob's emotional psyche as he as he as he puts on clothes to make it seem like he's his brother, 
as he as his dad says, "Hey, it sounds like Jacob, but it feels like Esau." And then he says, "It's me. It's me, Esau, Dad." You know, just imagine the emotional toil of lying straight to your father's face when he is helpless and can't even help himself, right? Imagine, and then and then there's the the there's the cold shoulder, the hard cold shoulder that Jacob gets from Esau. This this brother rivalry is really now a bri brother hostility and warfare. You know, imagine that. Imagine going home and you know that your brother hates you and he's waiting for dad to die so that he can kill you. Uh, and then imagine that when your dad is about to die, and this is what happens with Jacob and Isaac. Isaac's about to die, and 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 Jacob runs away. Um, he, he legitimizes it. Again, this is the sneaky Jacob. He and his mom legitimize his running away, but really that's what he's doing. He's running away. Um, you see the cost of sin. And today I want to invite you to re reflect on that. Like, what is the, what is the cost of your sin? Like, wh what does it cause internally? What's the internal cost of sin? Uh, what's the internal cost of hiding sin, of burying sin? What's the internal cost of, of lying about sin? What's the internal cost of making excuses for sin, of blaming other people for sin? Like, how has your sin caused pain to relationships, to inner tor turmoil? Uh, at the end, I want to read to you a, po a portion of Psalm 32. And David says, you know, he's talking about the cost of sin. And he says, when I kept silent, my your hand was heavy on me as in the heat of summer. Like you can, the cost of sin is, as you feel legitimately so, uh, because you've sinned against God, you legitimately feel God's heavy hand on you. <laughs> There's a cost to sin. But that's not the only thing that we see in chapters 27 and 28. We do see the cost of sin, but we also see, we also see the constancy of God. We also see the constancy of God. Um, if you flip the page in your Bible from the cost of sin in chapter 27 to the constancy of God in chapter 28, Jacob's running away. And, and who comes to him on the way? Right? Who, who, who appears to Jacob on the way? He, he's running away from his mom, his dad, his brother. He's running away from his sin. He still hasn't confessed that. He still hasn't come clean. Um, to to his brother, to his family. He's running away. He's got this sin heavy on his heart because he tricked his dad. He lied to his brother. His brother now hates him and wants him dead. Right? There's a cost of sin. And, and, and Jacob's now all alone. Right? He's isolated uh, because of sin. And who comes to him there? Right? Jacob lays down his head for the first night. And, and I just want to show you this. God comes to Jacob where he sets down his head at night and and he says to Jacob, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. Right? Jacob's sin. Jacob's sin could not ruin God's promise. Jacob's sin would not separate God from him. It should have, right? God should have said, Jacob, I'm done with you. Um, I, I know that when you were in your mother's womb, I promised that you were going to be the, the inheritor of the promise. I know that, but, but you sinned, so I have to take that away, right? But that's not what God does. God comes to Jacob and says, I will be with you. And I also want you to see beyond Jacob to Jacob's greater son, Jesus, and also see that Jacob does not bear the cost of his sin. Yes, he bears the consequences of sin. He bears the consequence of, of tension between him and his brother. He, he bears the cost of having to li leave his father and mother. Um, but he does not bear the, co the full cost of his sin, the eternal cost of his sin. There is another who bears it for him, and, and his name is Jesus. Right? Why, why did God remain with Jacob? Because of Jesus. <laughs> because of the Jesus still in the bones of Jacob that Jesus was going to bear, and he did bear, uh, for Jacob, for you, for me, for all. He bore the, the guilt, he, he bore the cost of all our sins, and he paid the full price. When Jesus said, it is finished, it means he had paid the full price for my sins, for your sins, for Jacob's sins, so that, so that you and I now, we don't bear the cost of sin anymore. Rather, we enjoy the constancy of God, because God is faithful. He doesn't leave us, he doesn't forsake us, he doesn't abandon us, he doesn't turn from us when we screw up. Um, instead, he confronts us in our sin and then comforts us with his promises. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Again, remember God's word to Jacob. I will. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. You can be sure of that. God is constant. He will not leave you. He will not leave you until he has done what he has promised. And what he has promised you is to forgive your sins and to bring you to your home in heaven. 
So in closing today, I want to read to you a portion of Psalm 32, because in Psalm 32, you, David teaches us about, about sin. He teaches us about, about what happened, the cost of sin in our lives. He, he, I'm not going to comment much on it, but he identifies for us what happens to our hearts uh, when we don't confess sins. So, like, we want to make excuses. Um, but David says, you, when you don't, the godly response to sin when we're ca caught in it is to confess it. Right, uh, the ungodly response to sin is to make excuses, to cover it up, to minimize it, to blame it on somebody else, to run away. Right, the God, and, but the, David says there's a, there's a cost to that. There's a relational cost. There's an emotional cost. There's a physical toil. David talks about those things, uh, but but notice the joy that's ours when we confess sins, and I, and I'm, and I hope you can begin to see this again and again and again that that. God loves it when we confess sin. I, we hate to confess sins. We hate to come clean, but God loves it when we do. And, and, it's, and we're blessed when we do. Uh, notice, listen to what David says, and then I'll let you go. Uh, this is what David says. Blessed, see, there it is, blessed. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Here's the cost. When I kept silent, right, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Right? There's a, there's a cost, right? When we don't confess our sin, it's like we can feel it, right? Even if we don't admit it, we can feel the pressure of sin. And, and that's a good thing because it dri drives us then to the cross. Then, right? Here, here's the joyful thing. Um, Rob, Rob, Steve, uh, I can't remember who all, who all is here with us with me this morning. Cindy, um, Bill, Charmel, Dwayne, Steve, Mary. So glad you're with me this morning. Here's the thing: when we confess our sins, then right. This is the next line. Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then I did this, and this is God's promise to you every single time, every single time. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Your sins are forgiven. Every one of them. Bring them to the Lord and he will not cast you out. He will lift you up. He will forgive you and set you on your way to live for him again. So live today in the forgiveness of the Lord. The Lord be with you all and grant you his peace.